Hello people love it's me, Ali Bauer, aka Ali Self Famous. Today I'm doing something new. As you guys know, I've been doing a lot of covers recently. And that is mainly due to the fact that I don't have time that much to be like doing like other vid other types of videos. But uh like my rant videos. I've done a couple on my channel with my mom. Which I am working on uploading right now. That means I don't have all the stuff right now. But um this week, starting in April, it was some, something started. It was called, uh, hold on, <laughs> let me get the exact thing. Pretty much a poet named Megan Fowley, uh, in honor of, ha of National Poetry Month. She put out a, um, a wick thing, three free writing prompts, pretty much, for Poetry Month. So far, we're on day four. Day one was, uh, what is something you're struggling with? Day two was, what time you're different? Day three was, like, your, your price of admission, like, or your, or the fee you pay, like, or with your life, pretty much. Like, an example she put was, like, perhaps you cannot date a smoker. You are unwilling to pay a smoker's price of admission. That's an example. And today is the fourth, well, today is the fourth as of, as of the recording, I'm not sure what day I'll be uploading this yet. Got to look at what videos I have uploaded. For all I know I could be uploading this it's not even in April. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and today is what something you've always wanted but never went for. So uh I I've I've written my own poetry a lot but I've been doing this too. So Mitch day one was like, what do you need to prosper? What do you need and like want? So, I'm going to get more comfortable in a second and then we'll start reading. Let's get to it. Okay. I am now under my coat, very comfy, my feet aren't, but. <coughs> this first one is called My Reason. The prompt. This prompt is what I need to prosper. Hearing your voice. Feeling your arms wrap around my waist, your fingers teasing the hem of my shirt, and going to town tickling me until I cry. This is my happiness. Now here we are, just three months ago, we marked one year in our first ever relationship. It's funny how weird people find it that we were each other's first relationship. That you may be my last, but I'm realizing there's no boy like you. And you have not, and you have not spoken to me kindly in over a month. You snap at me when I speak, yet I still love you. People tell me I deal with too much, yet I defend you and say I've been moody. I've been pushing him away. It's not his fault. Everyone needs space for once in a while. But not everyone needs to disinfect me and flirt with you, call you by your name, cheering for you in baseball. <clears throat> He's your type, all except wide eyes and pale skin. He's still petite. That's the type of girl you want. As I sit here crying, my friends ask me, when did when did that kid become a popular kid? I shrugged and get up, walk to the bathroom, hide and stall, and start to cut. Go to the mirror and wipe off all of that mascara. I walk out feeling numb until I see her laughing at your jokes. You smiling so dearly, even the girl I once hated with passion, because you lit up when speaking of her, has been by my side this entire time. I'm always asked, <clears throat> sorry, I'm always asked what I am needing. My counselor, of course, it's her job, but that's, but she's the only one who ever seems to care. I want to tell her what I need. Instead, I say, I need to think. I need a space to cry. I need to stop cutting. I need to be able to calm myself down. While in the back of my head, I'm screaming out, I need him to talk to me. I need him to stop gazing into her eyes. I need him to care. I need him to hold me. I need him to rub my back. I need him to tell me it's okay. I need him to love me again. No. That's an emotional poem for me. That was day one. Okay. Day two, a time almost different. A towel wrote very simply. I've changed. I was always that girl, pale vanilla skin, 
grassy green eyes, waterfalls of cocoa. It all changed. I entered school after break, my hair short, black as tar, my skin closer to caramel. My eyes become sea foam. Everyone's staring. You dyed your hair. I was liked that differently. Looked at differently. I am beautiful. I look beautiful. I weather this change. After this change. <laughs> Sorry. I love my change. Now I don't see her in photos of you. Call me by my name. Not a simple, a simple shortcut. That girl you kissed in that photo looks sweet and pure. Now she's dark and empty. I've become something new. And that is something amazing. Yet, I am I am strong and dark, yet soft and white. I am complex. I have changed. And it's amazing. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, another kind of emotional one. This next one is a uh, day thing which I titled Mother's Milk. Pretty much your fee slash admission in relationships. I crave understanding, like a newborn from Mother's Milk. I cry and scream upon it being taken away from me. I cannot go without my attempt at being milk for more than a couple hours. Otherwise, I'm restless. I blow up. I make sure you hear my cries, whether you react. I'm like an infant, I will do as you ask. I'll cook, I'll clean, I'll kiss your body, do as you want, as you please. All I ask in return is attention. I don't see a bit of cuddling, endless hugs, kisses on my neck and cheek, or a damn text back. That's too much. It is merely my fee. For baby, its fee is nine months in mother's womb, and raising them eight years. For mommy to have amazing memories. I ask for love and affection, so I can know I'm not wasting my time pleasing you. When you don't care about me, when I could be someone else's dream, for a mother, they cry for a mother, they cry for mother's milk. For us, I am your infant, and your attention is the milk I crave. This was the first time I've ever really read out my poems, anyone like besides my mom. So, uh, yeah. That one was day three, which I wrote yesterday. Now, today, day four, what I want. The poem I wrote is called Not This Life. I am asked all the time, what do you want? Not, really real, not that they really care, not that anyone cares, but what I really want is to be loved. Wake up, check my phone, see them end the conversation. Hi, right, baby, I love you. And a new text set. The next morning cutie keeps the emoji. What I want is this space to be fixed. This vase which my trust and other in by the careless acts of others. It was shattered. It was all my fault. It was broken to begin with. I shouldn't have put it on that table. What I want is to spend at least one damn night where I don't cry myself to sleep. I wake up and don't have to change my pillowcase because still wet from eleven hours ago. Yeah. 11. I sleep that late sometimes because I'm tired. Not just my body, but my mind, which is always working. I sleep that damn late because I'm dreaming of a better life. Hoping you never wake up, at least not in this life. Mm -hmm. I want to make a kind of long video because all my videos are fairly short. So, uh. I'm gonna look for one. What? <coughs> 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 that damn mirror show me everything I don't want to see. I'm forced to see this image. I'm forced to cry over a filled gap between my legs. I'm forced to scratch and cut out the ball that hides one in my rib cage. That damn mirror I use as a guide so I can wipe off the mascara that ran down my cheeks. When just moments ago, I sat on the toilet and pulled a piece of my pencil sharpener against my skin. 
that those white lines and dark scabs, they're my trophy, they're my reward, at least that's what I thought. You know, back in fifth grade, when I was 30 pounds in the weight, when you're later, these are my trophies, I think, if you look at my thighs. I'm hiding in my bed from crying because I just saw my best friend's scars. I was at school and the teacher told me to check on her. She ran to the bathroom during PE crying. I go in and I hear her sobs and ask to come in. She doesn't let me, so I crawl under. She's cutting because of what she saw in that damn mirror. She saw what her mother spilled in her head, that she was fat and ugly, that she was worthless and stupid. All she saw was bags and she cut her dark skin, all because of that damn mirror showing her what wasn't true. This is just the sixth grade. Another year later, now I've met this boy, he's tall, skinny, and tan, at least what I see from his face. That's all, that's what I see, his tan skin. He's never seen without his hoodie or sweatshirt. I've never seen without long pants, never showing anything but his hands and face. Now look at what likes him, my new best friend. Comes to me crying. He's cutting, I saw his scars, and I don't know what to do. She saw him for his shoulder as they held her close. All this during a passing period. One trolls around and we go to the usual spot. We enter our history classroom. Me and the girls stare at the table and his friend. The teacher announced she'll be leaving to use the restroom. I go to the boy and ask to him. He stands up and follows me to another corner of the room. Show me your arms. He chooses a smart ass with me and extends his covered arm. Your wrist, I say in a stern tone. So he raises his sleeve, scar after scar, scab after scab. His arm is candy cane striped red and white, and I cry. I continue to cry, especially when we are walking. So I hear him mumble self eel as he swims past the damn mirror. This was just seventh grade. We were talking about a suicide at least ten times. Now I'm an ace. I was writing this time dating that boy, that girl almost who hates me, but we all still do it. Because no matter how many people hug us and tell us they care, we don't care in return. We don't care who claims to love us. We are too deep in our own pain and own misery. We can't focus on others. We can't be happy at the words, I love you. Because when you hurt the way we do, it's meaningless. <sighs> yeah. My poems can get quite dark sometimes, but that's something that I kind of love about my poems, that they're never perfect and happy. Here's a short poem called Mess. I'm missing, I'm missing you. I say that I miss you more than you ever, than you will ever know. I get it. All you can do is look around me as if you can't see me. I know I have made a mess. I know I hurt you. I love you. It's a little short one. Mm. Safe repose. My sweet love. His heart, my, my most precious gem. His kisses, my lullaby, my evening song. His arms, my castle, my cave. Our love, a secret place. From the restless world, a safe repose. From the ache of darkness, a fortress. She's too young. I'm just a little girl, but I'm broken and scarred. You don't know what I'm living. Everything feels so hard. You tell me how to feel, so the best things to conceal. So are the things I need to deal. I'm a mess, distressed. I'm a mess in distress, so stressed. I can't even rest. See a dress, ain't find nest. Gender roles is how I'm dressed. Less the test, I felt less. My chest is at its tightest. Vision. I see you there, and on the room you stare. You don't see it. No, you don't see it. The moment you look away, I hate to say. I catch a glance at your distant glare. You don't see it. No, you don't see it. I'm beginning to break, starting to cry. You don't see this pain that starts from inside. Don't you see what you've done to me? I love you through and through. Although I've lied, I would, for you I would die. Broken. I break down class. All I do cry. Little do you know how bad I want to die. You say it's not bad. My life's a try. If you knew my pain, away you would shy. And this one I wrote just looks like a funny little rhyme because 
<sighs> One of my friends is having boy troubles. It's called problems. Boys are problematic. They call us dramatic. I say screw it. I always knew it. There was no alert. He left me in the dirt. He left me hurt in the dirt. Yeah, I miss the smell of his sweatshirt. Sad girls club. Girls cry. We try. Sometimes we want to die. And this wonders the why. Why am I always shy? Why do they always lie? Welcome to the sad girls club. We cry. We try. And mostly want to die. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pause and then uh, come back into the fireball. Okay, this is called craving. Just want to be loved. Cuddle me, caress my cheek, plant a soft kiss on my nose, tickle me, hold my hands, mess in my hair while I whine. I just want to be understood. Don't give me advice. Don't tell me it'll get better. Don't tell me everything is alright. What I need from you is. You're beautiful. How am I so lucky? I just want to kiss you. Understand me. Show me affection. Make sure everyone else I'm yours. Don't leave me alone. Don't ever let me go. For you are my never-ending craving. Oh my gosh, my heart's pounding right now. Like, I get the bum 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 bum. This is called shame versus love. Shame pushes me into silence. Shame keeps me at home. Shame makes sure I avoid one on one time. Shame says I need to protect my, co- my thoughts at all costs. Shame says not to share the boring stuff. Shame gives me to package myself up as attractively or interestingly as possible so that people may always see me in an appealing light. Shame says I'm unwanted and I'm invisible as I am. Shame says nobody cares. Shame says I'm not special without effort. Shame says I'm more flawed than everyone else. Shame says I'm not allowed to fail. Shame says I didn't perform well today because nobody checked me out or complimented me. Shame says my looks are all I'm good for. Shame says I'm loved because I receive applause. Shame pushes me to spend years perfecting my talents and physical appearance so that I might have something to contribute to the world. Shame says my thoughts are not enough. Shame says my love is not enough. Shame says I am not enough. Love says I am. Love says I am good. Love says I am kind. Love says I was beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Love says my efforts count. Love says my fears are valid, but I am worth the risk. Love says I deserve to be seen as I am. Love says I am unique when I'm not trying to be. Love says I am a blessing. Love says I am known. Love says I am safe. Love is not over me. Love says I have so much to give. Love says my flaws aren't just lovable. There's reason I'm able to be loved. Flaws make you vulnerable. Vulnerability makes you able to connect. Connection is where love comes from. It all starts with the flaws. So that's, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get three more. That'll be it. <clears throat> How sweet is it that he is mine on a cold December afternoon? We snuggle close under twinkling light, holding each other. Minutes out, I his I his arms are strong as he pulls me in close to him. I inhale slowly, wanting to take it all in. I memorize him, the feeling that comes when he's holding me close. I am safe, warm, wanted, loved, cherished. I am his, and I couldn't be happier knowing this. Yo, hey. <clears throat> okay, it's almost been 20 minutes, and I was going to end chapter 20, so uh, I, I've never read any of these poems out loud before. 
so that's why it was a bit hard for me to read. Also, I have to be a bit quiet because people are still sleeping. So, uh, yeah. They see in the background. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check the like button, hit the subscribe button, below the comments. I'll see you guys next time on the web. Bye.